All right, so it is our final day here in Tennessee, but before we tear everything down and hit the road to the next location, we figured we'd give you a full bus tour and show you everything that I have built into this to make it, in my eyes, the best mobile hunting camp uh, that I've seen. So come along. So all, most cooking happens outside. So I either rock the Camp Chef griddle top grill combo. I also have one of the small Traeger grills that I can plug into the bus system and it doesn't pull too much power. As far as an overview of the bus itself, I bought the bus uh, New Year's Eve 2016. It is a 1993 GMC Bluebird. It was built in Iowa, but I bought it out in Colorado and then uh, did the build the following summer. Um, when I bought it, it had 190,000 miles on it, but the school district had done a complete rebuild on the motor and the transmission uh, 20,000 miles before I bought it. So it's actually in pretty good running condition. And I've since put on Oh, I think 25,000 miles over the last two years. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been good so far. So the entire idea behind the bus was A, to convert it and have a mobile hunting camp or mobile just recreation vehicle. Uh, but really it was a chance to use it as a moving billboard to raise awareness about public lands and how important they are to us, as well as raising money and awareness about conservation and, and giving back to all of those organizations that have funded the way and have allowed us to do what we love to do, which was get outside and whether you're hunting or fishing or hiking, um, it's important to give back to all of those types of activities. So the bus is basically a rolling conservation mobile now and uh, just traveling the country, hanging out on public land and preaching the good word. So the motor in the bus is a CAT 3116. So it's just a straight six. And a lot of people ask me what kind of gas mileage I get. Um, and it depends really. So like if I'm rolling flat ground with a not too big of a headwind, you know, anywhere from seven to nine and a half miles per gallon. But if I get any sort of a big headwind or whatever, it just drops it in the tank. But luckily I have a 60 gallon diesel tank on it so I can travel for a long ways. No cruise control, no heat, no AC. So it, driving it is a chore. I mean, it just gets pretty tiring driving. So I usually try to plan my trips where I have a lot of time to get to my destination and I'll only go, you know, two to 300 miles a day uh, if, I, if I can do that without pushing it too far down the road. Uh, people are often curious about what I do once I get to camp. So basically the bus is made for driving from point A to point B and then setting it back up just like it looks behind me. And then when I'm in camp, I'm either with friends or family who have driven there to meet me so we have a vehicle to get around or I'll use uh, the Yamaha Wolverine X2 to bounce around and hunt anywhere close by. But, so one of my favorite things about the build was this wall tent behind me. So it's a, uh, it's a custom job. A lot of people ask me where I got it, where they could get one, um, but I built the whole thing myself. I didn't do the sewing, but I bought the conduit and the fittings and built the framework. All of the fabric came from Montana Canvas. They built me the panels for the sides and then I had a canvas and awning shop sew it all together for me to fit the frame. And all the fittings just break apart the whole thing comes down, tent rolls up, and I either store it in the back of the bus usually or on the trailer. And then all of the poles can also be either stored in the bus or on the trailer. A lot of people have asked, like, how fast can I drive the bus? So I actually got brand new tires for it. I put all BF Goodrich tires on, and they're actually oversized compared to what the old ones were. And so on the speedometer, I can roll between 51 and 56 and I'm going between 60 and 65. So it's just the speedometer doesn't quite match up, but I luckily I have a GPS that I can make sure I'm not speeding, which usually isn't an issue. Through the course of the build, uh, my time window kept shrinking and I decided that I wanted to keep, I wanted to build it exactly for how I needed it and not to overcomplicate things, which meant I didn't do any pl actual plumbing in the bus. And so for water, I have refillable five gallon jugs. It's super cheap to refill at Walmart usually roll with 25 gallons when I get to camp. For the bathroom, I'm either parked in a campground where it has facilities or near a national forest where I'm out hiking anyway, and most of the time I'm pooping in the woods. So just, you know, get over it. Um, I did buy a battery powered um, pump system that has a, runs off one pound propane tanks so I can have hot water and I can run that out to a portable shower. So every few days I can hop out there, throw five gallons in the tank, and uh, take a nice long shower and clean up. Kept it very simple because there's no reason to overcomplicate honey camp. All right, let's go inside. 
So this is the inside of the awning and we've uh, cleaned up quite a bit. So during this trip, we just had everybody's gear kind of laid out here where people could get ready in the morning. Um, I'll go a little bit more in depth on the solar panels in a little bit. Once we get inside, I'll talk about the, the battery system. But usually just have chairs all set up in here. When it's cold, like the first time, night that we were here, it was down to 25 degrees. And so the first few days we were running the wood stove quite a bit just to take the edge off. And then <clears throat> usually I just have tables and stuff set up back here so I can make either coffee or cook a little bit of food in here. Like I said, most of the cooking I try to do outside just to keep the smell down within the awning, but it's nice to be able to heat water and hang out and do everything within the awning. Really, the awning is more so just a really nice way to combat gear sprawl. If I only had the bus, trying to house five guys in there would be a nightmare as far as clothing and other stuff goes. It would just be everywhere. So this extra 200 square feet gives quite a bit of extra room to spread out and kind of have their own space and uh, feel a little bit more comfortable in camp. I was talking about before I just built the frame. So it's just one inch electrical conduit. And then all the fittings are, I ordered off of a canopyfittings.com or something like that. <clears throat> a lot of people wonder how it's attached to the bus. So it's not actually attached to the bus. I set the whole awning up and then I just slide it up next to the bus. And then I've got three lines that go over the top of the bus and hook to the other side. And it just holds it from that way and then I've got guy lines all around the outside that keep it pinned down in case it does get really windy. That's pretty much it for the outside area of the bus. So let's go in and see how I built it out. Zach's driving today. So the, the driver's seat area, I actually didn't change anything at all. I just decided that there was no reason to really revamp this whole area. I just keep it simple, leave it, and then work everything back from the driver's seat. Um, yeah, you know, driving a bus is, uh, I have described it in the past as like driving an 18,000 pound microwave that's on down the road. So it's just real loud and uh, moves around a lot. There's a little, lot of play in the, in the steering. It's a chore to drive, but it's, it's fun for sure. I think I'll keep, I'll just sit in the driver's seat. I don't think I want to drive it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does have air ride though. So, you know, takes off. So, yeah, there you go. It's <laughs> pretty good. So the front of the bus, I built a little L-shaped couch area, which I tried to incorporate storage into absolutely every piece of furniture that I built. So all of the, I do have pillows for this. Looks real pretty. I haven't set those up in a while, but uh, I do have storage underneath the whole couch here. On the other side, I built a little desk. A lot of times I'm it's just me in the bus. And so this becomes my work area. Um, I can either slide the fridge freezer out and put a chair there or just slide that out and work on that if I'm doing something real quick. For refrigeration, I have this Dometic uh, CFX 75. So <clears throat> this draws less power than pulling, the, basically less power than your cell phone charging. So I can leave that plugged into my battery system. And on this side, I have a freezer and you can see like this is a back strap that I put in there I guess like 12 days ago and it's completely rock solid still. And then I keep this side a fridge and so you can keep everything else that doesn't need to be frozen in. Let's talk power. So my battery system sits underneath the left side of this counter. So it's just right behind this door here. It's just two really big deep cycle batteries, which I have connected to two different chargers. So I have a converter, which I can plug into either shore power or a generator. And then I just run that line and it plugs in up here and then that will charge the batteries. I also have a set of ZAMP solar solar panels, which gives me a 340 watt solar system. And uh, those actually do a really good job of keeping the batteries topped off, uh, especially when there's only a couple of us in camp. So the batteries then run to a 3,500 watt inverter, which I have run to this um, power strip right here. And so most of the charging just happens right here. And then I have two extension cords for, that run from the inverter to the back of the bus. And so I have another power strip back there that I can charge back by the bedroom. And then I have a LED lighting system that runs around the whole top behind um, the wood on the top of the bus to give it a little bit extra soft glow at night. This little gap right here underneath the deer is where I keep my heater. So it's just a Mr. Heater um, 20,000 BTU heater. And then I can slide that out right here and if it's cold, turn that on. And then I have a little fan that I turn to circulate the air and it keeps the bus just nice and toasty. When I'm running the heater, I always at least keep 
a couple windows cracked, probably two or three windows cracked, and then I do have a carbon monoxide detector just so I'm not out here on the road and asphyxiate myself because that would be a bummer. So this is just a, uh, a, a prep counter for everything. It's just kind of my kitchen area within the bus. I built it out of old uh, wood off of an old granary and then did a two-part epoxy on the top so it's like a bar top. Underneath that, I've got storage under here. Just like I said before, just try to have a lot of storage throughout the entire bus. Uh, this space was originally going to be the bathroom. So I was going to put a, just a composting toilet in there, like I said, and I opted to avoid that because I didn't want to deal with plumbing. So I have turned it into a closet and I can actually put a ton of gear um, into the closet here. I did double bunk beds. So really comfortably in the bus, I can sleep five. We had six in the bus this week. So one person was sleeping on the couch, but all of the, uh, all of the bunks open up for storage. So top and bottom both open up and I can throw extra gear in there. Um, when I'm going on these trips, a lot of times I'm leaving for a month, two months, three months at a time. So I'm packing for multiple different seasons and I can have all of my clothing for the first season in the closet and then jam everything else in here. So I'm just trying to always plan way in advance and have everything that I'm going to need along the way. And finally, the master bedroom. So I have a full size queen bed and then I built the bed frame really high and so I could store pretty much uh, everything else underneath the, the bed in the back. I've learned that it's like a backpack. The bigger it is, the more stuff you're gonna put in it. So the bus is like a giant backpack and I have figured out a way to fill it uh, when I'm on the road. But when you get all set up, it's pretty dang comfortable. So if I were to do the bus again, like one of the main changes that I would do to the bus is Honestly, I wouldn't buy one as long as this. So with that awning, everybody hangs out in the awning most of the time and then just comes inside to sleep. So they make a bus size that's in between this and a short bus, like a 45 passenger. So I would probably buy a slightly smaller bus, just a little bit more maneuverable and then do the same size awning. But other than that, like for what I do with it, it I built it like exactly how I wanted it. I did the initial build of the bus in two months, but since then I've been constantly adding things and improving things and moving things around um, and just getting it situated. And I'll be adding an AC unit and a 12 volt like awning. So I don't always have to set up the wall tent. Also gonna be putting in some much brighter lights for when I'm on back roads uh, using Baja designs. But yeah, always improving. If you guys have any ideas or other questions about the build, um, just comment below and I'll try to respond or THP will ask me and I'll try to give them the answer, so. If you'd like to help support the bus and the bus project, I do have a company called Public Land Tees where we give, this is wearing one of them currently, um, but $5 from every shirt or hat or cup sold goes back to conservation. So all spring, all of the turkey shirts, $5 from every shirt will go to the National Wild Turkey Federation, um, but we give to organizations across the board and uh, try to raise a bunch of money for conservation and, and give back. We've also got a bunch of other gear options. We've got a ton of different sticker designs. We've got hats, shirts, cups, um, basically just everything over at publiclandtees.com. So again, every, a portion from every sale goes back to conservation. Helps keep me on the road, pays for a little diesel, gives back a little bit of money. Um, overall, a win-win for everybody. So uh, thanks for following along on the trip here in Tennessee. We are going to get this thing torn down while we got a break in the rain and head for Arkansas. So be sure to follow along. And like I said before, any other questions, just comment below.